Welcome back to Not Real Fishing, everybody. And today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We are gonna be doing a survival fishing challenge where I went and I bought one of those old school B&M uh, cane poles. And we are gonna go to a local creek that's near here. And I don't have any bait, no soft plastics, just what the rod comes with. And we're gonna see if we can catch something that would be edible or if we're just gonna get skunked. Now, the river's probably gonna be very fast current right now because we've had rain for like a week straight. Um, so we'll see. And last time we were there, I fished for almost an hour and a half, two hours, and I caught one little catfish. So it's not gonna be as easy as it normally is fishing there. So it should be a pretty good idea of what it's like because I mean if you're out somewhere and you just happen to have one of these rods in your car for you know an emergency you need to see if it actually works so most likely it will but the hard part is going to be finding bait but uh but yeah I'll meet you guys at the water and we'll get this challenge started all right guys we made it to the water now we have a few issues that we're going to have to face today as far as fishing with this technique First one is gonna be bait. Second one is there's still a lot of current. I don't know if you guys can see this, but look how much faster the water is flowing. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to catch fish, but we could also drift it down to these points and fish might be stacked up waiting for food as well. Another concern I'm worried about is we have caught nice sized bass in this area. If we hook into one on this rod, I don't know if it's going to have the strength to hold up to it, which is something that you need to take into account in a survival situation. If you are using small gear and you catch a big fish and then you lose it, that, that, that's, that's your food gone. So you want to be able to catch small and large species, even if you're targeting small, because you don't want to be targeting small species, hook something big, lose all your gear, break your rod, now you have no way of getting food with that technique and you have to do something else and today we're going to be using this i think i've already said it but we're going to use this one you can see how much i paid for it at uh whatchamacallit uh dick sporting goods and we are going to rig it up exactly how it says to do on the packaging i mean that's not a good sign look at that the line that they send on there is hanging off and it's burnt on the end where the machine must have cut it so we're gonna start with this and then we're gonna find some bait and we're gonna get to it. All right guys, we followed exactly like the package said. Wrap it down a few inches, tie it off. Tie it off, wrap it down a few inches. And now we're just gonna unfurl this. I still haven't connected it yet, so it's still short. But we're gonna get this all untangled and we are gonna hopefully find some bait, and then catch us a fish. The line does have a lot of kinks in it, which makes me a little nervous. If we were to hook into something very large, that those kinks might cause an issue. We're gonna fish it about not too deep because the current's kind of fast. I do like the fact that they send you a nice, a nicest hook. It's fairly beefy, but it's not too much that it's going to be unrealistic. Now the knot that they've used, I don't have the best faith in because I don't know why some companies do this. I guess because of the machine, they do like a cinch knot almost, but they don't go through the eye. So it pulls right against that rough spot on the hook right there see that that little rough spot that's in the eye of the hook there's a nice so it's going to pull right on that and that might cut your line under a lot of thrashing i'm going to trim this tag off just a little so we're going to have a little bit of tag still so if this breaks i would recommend retying this through the eye of the hook but because we're doing this as it is out the box you know pretending we don't know how to do all this we're going to leave that as it is and see how that goes but before i do that i gotta clean up my mess all right guys now 
the hunt for bait begins. I think I'm going to start right here in front of us because we have a lot of brush and brambles. And it's totally possible that there's one just, there's something just under some of this. I did see a cricket when we first got here. So maybe we can get a hold of him. He went towards this pile over here. So we're going to try to find something in this brush pile here. Whether it's a worm, a cricket, a grasshopper, just anything. I see roly polies. You gotta be careful. I see a lot of ants too. We might be digging into an ant hill. So I'm going to get a stick to continue my digging. Now I do hear a lot of grasshoppers and stuff at an area near us, which we could probably walk over to. But just for right now, oh, there's a worm. There we go, guys. First bait, little teeny tiny worm. Now we are not gonna collect a bunch of bait because we have no container to put it in. So we are gonna rig this little guy up. Very little worm. Can't even get him on the hook. He just falls apart, so. He's lively though, so he should work. Come here, dude. All right, got him hooked through once. All right, there's our first bait. Hopefully that gets us something. We got our rod ready. We're gonna swing this out there and let's see if we can get something. We're gonna fish right here after this current break and just let it drift. Try another drift here, guys. If we don't get a fish on this one, we might look for a different bait. Maybe something with a bit more flavor. I'm gonna try to drag it just underneath the surface to see if I can get a reaction strike out of something. That might be hanging out close to the bank. Just because it's a survival tool doesn't mean we can't use other techniques. And we can make this look like it's alive. Like that, there we go. There we go. So. Little worm. Hey, 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 hey. Caught us a little fish. Now in turn, you could use this for many things, even though it's a small fish. With this fish, you could use the guts as chum or as bait to put to build a fish trap to catch other fish species. You could use the head as bait you can actually keep the flesh to eat yourself, especially if you found some, you know, if you know the area you're in, find some local, you know, plants that you know that they're safe to eat and make like a stew with it. So you put that in the water, you boil it basically. That way you're getting all the nutrients from the meat, you're using the bones, you're using everything. Or you could fillet it and just cook it too. So. We caught us one fish. Now, that's not really enough to make a full stomach, but if you're hungry, I see, that's one of the things I was worried about. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if y'all look at that hook, look at my line. So now that we've caught something with their hook set up, I'm going to trim this and, or trim this, and I'm gonna retie it with a uh, cinch knot. And then we're gonna find some bait, and then we're gonna catch another fish. Hopefully. Retied. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk this way towards this taller grass and see if we can get a hold of a grasshopper. I just wanna spook one first so I can see it come out the grass and then chase it down, hopefully. Because they're really hard to see unless, you know, you spook one first. So we're gonna see if we can find a grasshopper 
or a cricket. There's a little grasshopper, he's a little too small. There's another little one. Now normally I would recommend doing this with a stick because you don't want to go kicking bushes when you're out somewhere because you might, you know. Let's go check over by this tree. There might be some stuff. Oh wait, I see a cricket. Y'all see him? You think you're slick. Come here, bud. There we go, guys. Big fat cricket. Now we're going to take him. And we're going to hopefully catch another fish with him. Now I don't rig my crickets up anyway, particularly special. I just hook them through the body. About like that, about how I hook mine. Still got our line, barely shallow. We're gonna throw this out towards the middle and we're gonna let it drift. This should be much quicker bite than that worm because crickets to me are one of the best, especially if it's like a, the more of the, like the ones you buy. Oh, we lost our cricket. We had one though. All right, well, let's get another piece of bait. We got us a nice size worm here. We're gonna put, look at that shine on that bad boy. So we're gonna put one piece of him. I guess we'll just hold on to him for now. Well, hmm. We'll see. Mine's wrapped around a bush, as usual. Let's get over to where we want to fish. Get the hook out of our pants. And try to catch a fish with what we got. There we go. Got us a little fish. So now we're getting closer to a full stomach. Hold on. I'm not gonna actually eat you. I'm just saying that if I was going to, that I could. There's another one, guys. Gonna let that one go as well. We're going, we still have a little tiny piece of worm left on here. So we're gonna slide it down to just at the bend of the hook. And we're gonna put it up current this time a bit more and let it drift while we look for the worm that we lost. I need a stick. Got him. Found our worm. Let's get him on the hook. Bit bigger of a presentation. Now, if you really wanted to, you could tear this guy into smaller pieces. So you could use multiple pieces of him. But since we're in a location that they're not hard to come by, I would say use what you got. Now that little tag end might be a problem because I might be able to suck it right off. So I might twist him one more time and just shorten him up just a little. 
There we go. Make it a little bit shorter. Big old ball of worm. Untangle our line from everything. Something just came up and fed right in front of us. I'm not sure what it was. It looked like a little bass. Oh, that was a little red breast. I'm simply just... There we go, got him. So, not the biggest species we've got so far, but... It's definitely enough to make some fish soup. God dang, dude, you are hooked. There we go, another little guy. Now it's also possible you could take those fish that you're catching and use them for bait. You know, cut them into little chunks and use them as a uh, cut bait for catfish or bass. Move our float up just a little. Fish just a little bit deeper. See if that changes anything. Changed a lot apparently. Found where they're sitting, at least for now. So that's what, four now? And like I said, not the biggest on sizes, but if you were hungry, you would definitely be eating much better than you would be if you didn't have this. And this is just straight out from what they give you at the store. Now, do I think there's better options than this? Absolutely. Is this still awesome and a ton of fun? Absolutely. There's just something about using an old school, legit cane pole that's just so satisfying. The bamboo has a different feel than fiberglass. And there's also that slight risk of you don't want to break it because you don't know the limits because each bamboo is a little bit different. So it adds that little air of, of anxiety to the fishing as well. Or maybe that's just me. Either way, I think it's great. Look at that, that's good luck. Dragonfly on the front of the rod. See, getting a bite. We missed him, but we were getting a bite. Told you it's good luck. In a nibble. Got him. Oh, stop. Yes, you're in a survival fishing video, but I have no intentions of eating you. Now, when I get to 500 subs, you might be in trouble. Let's let this little guy go. He flipped when he should have flopped. I'm looking at my... Uh... All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna head back here into the woods and then work our way back. For two reasons. One, I gotta pee. Two, I gotta pee. And three, I wanna be in the shade. So we're gonna make our way back there and we're gonna work our way back up this little section. 
we're gonna hopefully find some bait back here because it's similar terrain that we've been in. So it should be similar as far as what's available. What's available. Now, you really gotta be careful when you're walking through this kind of grass because it is a perfect place for a snake to just be chilling. And you really don't want to step on one, so I always try to find like some sort of trail that's been made. Which can also be a negative because snakes might be in the trail because it's open, it's sunny, and they're getting, you know, they're recharging their batteries. But I'd rather be able to see where I'm stepping and see the snake as opposed to just guess and then bam, bit by a snake. Which thankfully most of the snakes we have here aren't that poisonous. I mean, we do have rattlesnakes and we do have, um, that scared the bejesus out of me. The frog jumped in the water and made me jump. Don't know why, but it did. So here's that little bubbling brook area that I wanted to fish. And I want to fish back here because it's a bit cooler. Let's go this way. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to throw our bait right out here. Huh. And get stuck in a giant spider web, apparently. What I was going to say is we're going to throw our bait right out here. Let that sit. And while that sits, I'm going to go pee. There we go. Another little bluegill. And now to find more bait. We caught one more guys. I'm gonna have to call it here. My camera is overheating so this is going to be it for the video, so if you enjoyed, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next one. And uh, don't forget, take it easy!